We're back to a little Brown Stock, and we are welcomed, and we are thrilled to have Kelly Holcomb joining the program. Kelly, former Browns quarterback. We have Tim on every week, and now we have Kelly Holcomb joining the program. Kelly, thank you so much for taking some time. How you doing today? I'm good, man. How y'all doing? Kelly, great Kelly. to see you, man. Yeah. Great to see you. How do you? So y'all got? So y'all have? Go ahead. I'm so, sorry. sorry. So y'all have marble. So y'all have marble mouth on every weekend, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Every Friday, yeah. Shots fired. He's on the show ten seconds, and he's already fired his <laughs> yeah, first shot. Yeah, yeah. You're going to fit in just fine here, Kelly. Hey, Kelly, how do you watch the Browns these days? Man, it's it's. Uh, I was. I figured y'all were going to ask me that question, but I don't watch them much, man. I'll be honest with you. Wow. I don't. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, we we've got free access to uh, all the games, and you know what? I don't even devy into it, man. I, I golf now, and I keep up with it. I do keep up with it because I have a podcast, so I have to keep up with it. But I don't. Uh, I, I watch them all, man. I, I I don't really get too detailed. Um, I don't really get too detailed in the uh, in, in all that, but uh, I still watch games, but I'm not as involved as I used to be. Kelly, what was your favorite Browns memory when you was the quarterback? Of the Browns? Um, man, just uh, there were so many there were so many good times there, and we didn't do a, we didn't do a great deal of winning, which kind of sucked. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I just was I, I was able to compete with Tim to start. Uh, you know, the playoff game is what everybody remembers me from uh, when, when we lost to the Steelers. That, that was probably my that was probably the coolest game we've ever been in. Although everybody asked me about that game, and it was awful because the way we lost that game, we should have never lost that game. We, we were up thirty three to thirteen, and we were about to go into the fourth quarter, and then they score. And then, you know, it just – everything got sidetracked. So, yeah, I, I remember that game. Uh, I can remember the Cincinnati game where, you know, it was back and forth when I was going against Carson Palmer. And um, we were kind of rolling. They were rolling. Neither defense could stop the other one. I had five touchdowns. Um, you know, Carson did really well, too, and they, they ended up beating us at the end. So, there's there a lot of good moments. I don't know if I could pinpoint one. You know, Kelly, listen, I, you go back to that playoff game. And um, at during this time period where, you, you know, you guys had you and Tim Couch, we used to always have this saying. We used to have a saying that Kelly Holcomb has a different playbook. It just seemed, it just seemed like when you came in the game, they was like, yo, we're going to go with uh, the teacup formation. And you were slinging it all over the, over the place, the Quincy Morgans, the Andre J. Davises. Like, how, how wow. you know, was it, was it something that you guys, you know, when you got in the game, it just seemed like y'all was wide open, throwing the ball everywhere. Well, I don't know if that was the case. Uh, I do, man. Man, you brought up some old names, man. I'm still on a, uh, I'm still on a text with all those guys, with Andre Davis, with Cuddy, with Northcutt, with uh, <laughs> with Andre King, with all with Quincy Morgan, with KJ. So, I'm still on a thread with those guys. I, I don't know. It was just, a, it was a deal where, you know, this where a team, you know, uh, gets ready for one guy, and then another guy comes in, they're not ready, and and I was with Bruce for a. I was with Bruce for a long time uh, in Indianapolis, and he brought me to Cleveland, and I kind of knew the – I knew the offense in and out. And uh, I just came in, and, you know, that's uh, – I, I was accurate with the football. Bruce trusted me, and, you know, it kind of went from there. It, it, it really wasn't anything – I just I just was able to come into some games and able to, you know, finally start. But then when I started, I couldn't stay healthy. It, it was – I think about that sometimes. And I tell people all the time, man. It was it was tough because when I got my opportunity, I couldn't stay healthy. It kind of that was kind of my NFL career, which I got some opportunities and just could not stay healthy. And uh, that was one of those deals. But I enjoyed it, man. And uh, I, I don't know if the playbook changed, but I think Bruce had a lot of trust in me, and he knew that I'd been in the offense for a long time. And I, I think that's why you saw that. You kind of, you guys are kind of you, you're, you're you know you got seven years, man. You, you, you're shafting me six. I end up playing for 13, so, dang. Let's go. Who made that? Straight Who made back that? Grandpa. Grandpa. It, was, it was his Browns. Uh, hey, Kelly, you're so excited. He's all right. Playing with Charles. I'll just put his Brown stats on there. Hey, give me my flowers. Right. <laughs> I love Kelly like, comes God. in here throwing jabs. I like that. Go. Don't mess around. Like that. You're screwing up the stats. <laughs> Kelly, you know, players often to the public, to the media, will downplay rivalry games. You know, but in reality, in the locker room, do these games mean more when you're playing the Steelers? 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. They do mean more, but I don't know. it now. It's become more of a rivalry now that the Browns have started winning some of those games. Yeah. But when we played, I mean, we couldn't beat them. I think, I think when I was there, we beat them maybe once. I think it was. I can't remember the. I can't remember the game, but uh, Tim Tim played really well, and I think we beat those guys once. So yeah, it, it is a different deal. But you know, when, when it comes down to it, it's still a game. Uh, but everybody says, well, the Steelers and the Browns are rivalry. Well, when I played, it wasn't much of a rivalry because if it's a rivalry, both teams have to win some games. And, yeah. Man, they were squashing us year in and year out, and I hate that because I cannot stand the Steelers to this day. So, yeah. Yeah, baby. Uh, That's right. We love Kelly yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you all, man. I, can't, I cannot – everybody talks about the Steelers. I absolutely hate the Steelers. What's Steel. the best story from a Steelers game that would make us hate them even more? Ooh. Good. Oh wow, guys! Y'all are making me think a lot, man. I got knocked out quite a bit, so I don't know if my, my memory can recollect that. So did, so did uh, I'm not right. <laughs> we didn't have, you know, the, everybody's talking about the Tennessee Titans down here where I live, and uh, they they can't block anybody. And I was, it, it was funny because Tim and I were texting back and forth the other day on Sunday, and. We, we were talking about that that same situation because they can't block anybody, and it was kind of like the offensive lines that we had when we first got there. We just couldn't uh, we just couldn't protect. And Tim got killed when I went in. I got I got beat up pretty good too. So uh, you you have to have guys up front. But uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any stories. Uh, you know, I got I got Troy Palomalu paid a couple of times. I wish he'd send me a roll. You know, you know? so I, I don't know if there's any. I don't know if there's any stories that I could tell that y'all would hate them anymore, but I can't remember many stories, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Kelly, what was it like going up against Tim Couch competing for the starting quarterback job? Uh, it was just competition. I, I think that's what breeds success in that league. Um, I think the college game is kind of with this transfer portal, which I know guys transfer, but, uh, you know, I talked to my buddy Tom Moore, who's 85 years old, still coaching for the Tampa Bay Bucks. I said, I want, want your job. <laughs> and uh, we, we, were we were talking about that, and he was like, you know, nobody wants to compete anymore. And I think that's what makes that game and professional ball so good is competition. And I think people try to pin myself and Tim against each other like we didn't like each other. We're really good friends. We were really good friends then. It just was a situation where, hey, you know, Tim Tim got hurt a little bit. Uh, he didn't play as well, and and there was a lot of circumstances that came into that situation. But uh, it it was enjoyable for me, man. I was just finally given an opportunity. I'd hung around. I'd been to Indianapolis and been behind Peyton, and uh, there was no shot there. And he didn't allow anybody to get you know get a shot in there because he's he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. But uh, Bruce took me with him to Cleveland. And, uh, you know, when you get your opportunity, everybody wants to play. Everybody says, well, you were the backup. You got the best job in the world. Well, it's not the best job in the world if you're a competitor. I don't right. want to sit over there and watch somebody else play. And uh, a lot of guys do. I, I was not that guy. And I was able to get my opportunity. But, you know, like I said earlier, when I got my opportunity, I never could stay healthy. I never could stay on the field. So that kind of that – was, that was a sucky part of my career or something. Kelly, did you know Peyton Manning was going to be? I mean, obviously he had a ton of hype coming out of college, but did you know he? Did you know he was going to be as good as he was? For sure. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody knows how anybody's going to be. Now he obviously had the pedigree. His dad, uh, yep. you know, had played for a long time. Pey Peyton is a different. You know, he he was a different guy. I learned a lot of stuff from Peyton, even though I was the older guy. Uh, man, his work ethic is, is uh, you know, I've heard about Tom Brady's as well, and, and all the good ones have really good work ethics. But, you know, Peyton had a really good work ethic, and I can remember one day when, I, when, he, was a, when he was a rookie and there was a deal where Tom Moore was trying to get him. We had a slug go, a slant and go. So we had a slant and go to the one receiver side. Then backside, we had a seam and a hitch. Well, they were taking, telling us, because everything was under center most of the time, and uh, we took a three-step drop, then we would pump, and then we would shuffle back two steps. Well, Peyton could not get that. And I can remember him staying out there, and I'm like, this dude is a nerd. Because he stayed out there, <laughs> and he had the film crew film him so he could fix that problem. And that's kind of how – that's kind of sums Peyton up. That's 
Man, he watched so much film. Uh, he was very prepared. I can remember when we were playing the Miami Dolphins and after the game and during, during uh, the week after we had beat the Dolphins, but Tom Moore was telling a story where – uh, some of the assistant coaches came up after the game and told him we were going to try to corner cra corner cat or corner crash him, bring a corner blitz on the first play of the game. And, you know, half the team was saying, we're going to get him. And the other half says, no, he's going to find us out. Well, they went ahead and did it. Well, Peyton saw it, got it blocked up. We got a big play on the very first play of the game. So that was the kind of dude that Peyton was. And I, I, I learned a great deal from him. I really did. Wow. Mike, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, I, I like to ask – any former quarterback we have come on the show this question, but if you could create your optimal offense, so your quarterback, you get a play caller, two receivers, a tight end, and a running back. Who is fitting around Kelly Holcomb to create the most unstoppable show on turf? Oh, gosh, man. Y'all are asking some tough questions right here. Put me on the spot. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know what? I like the tight end. Uh, now, now is this is this when I'm playing or is this just Not all time? Forever. All time. Whenever. All time. All time. Yeah. All time. So, so receivers, I got to go with uh, I got to go with the guy I played with in Indianapolis, Marvin Harrison, yeah, as uh, as my as my split end. Um, I'd say I just uh, a couple of weeks ago I got to interview Gronk. I had a we had a boy boys and girls club deal up here, and uh, they asked me to ask the questions because he wanted to question an answer session. So I'd have to go with Gronk as my uh, as my tight end. Uh, Running back, uh, man, I played with Marshall Falk. Uh, he was really good, uh, really smart guy. Uh, smart, probably the smartest dude I've ever played with. Uh, when, when you're back there, I can remember playing with him a couple of times. He was like, hey, the Sam linebacker's coming, the Sam linebacker's coming. You need to put me over there. And I'm like, oh, hey, you go. You know, I was a rookie. And I'm like, yeah, you go. But he was one of the smarter guys I've ever had. Um, split ends, uh Golly, man, this is uh, you know it's got it's got to be you know I'd love to play with obviously Jerry Rice if I could. Wow. I think everybody would love to play with Jerry Rice. Although when when we played out there one time, uh, we was at Indianapolis and we played we played San Francisco and it was when Steve Young was there and man like Jerry Rice every time he didn't catch the ball he was always looking around for a flag so I, I didn't really dig that about him. <laughs> but he, you know he played for a long time so you know there's a reason that he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, are, are we, did you want a fullback or you want another receiver? Give us a fullback. We got to have a fullback. That's yeah, old, school old school right school. there. Yeah. yeah. A fullback. Um, I mean, you know, I, I guess you'd have to say Moose Johnson or the use check guy that's out in San Francisco right yeah. now. They're, yeah. they're pretty good players. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good players. So, Very good. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the offense I would run now, a regular offense. I don't know if I'd go with 21 personnel. I'd probably go with something else. But yeah. if that's where you're going with me, that's that's probably where I'd go. Kelly, what's the biggest difference in the game today from when you played? Too many flags. Good gracious, oh, can we stop man. the flags? Yeah. That's, it's, it's awful. Holy. Sometimes it's unwatchable. <laughs> It's unwatchable. It, it's like I, I'm sitting there the other – there's no – that like, like I thought referees – I, I understand that. I, I get it. But, like, referees are supposed to be – they're not supposed to be seen like that. Let let the guys finish the game. Now, now the other other night, uh, you know, I was watching my bills and, you know, two – you know, I, I don't I don't know as I necessarily agree with the pass interference call. I don't know if that affected him that bad. But when you got 12 guys on the field, you got to call that. But, like – some and I'm a quarterback too. Uh, I'm a quarterback, and I would have loved to play in these rules now, because oh, they don't be literally get to touch. They don't never. They don't get to touch the quarterback at all. So I'm not a fan of that because I think if you get some pressure on the quarterback and you start hitting him, it's a different game. I don't care who you are. I don't. You can put Peyton. You can put Tom Brady. You can put Drew Brees. You can put all those guys back there. If you start hitting them consistently, the game changes in your favor. And they're just not allowing that stuff. I just I cannot stand the flags. I don't like all that stuff. Uh, I, you know, they've tried to clean the game up. I, I like the targeting stuff because I don't think you need to lower your head right. because that's you know that's protecting the guy that's making the hit too. So uh, I like what they've done with that. But man, they, they, the competition committee's got to go back in and they got to look at this and say, hey, we're calling way too many flags during a game. Let, let's let's cut some of this out and let the flow of the game and let the guys actually play to win the game, not us calling it jeopardizing the game. I'd love to see a study or a stat on exactly what you just talked about because I was watching with some friends a couple of weeks ago, 
and we said the same thing, and we're all older, so we remember watching football in the 80s and 90s. I would love to see how many penalties on average there were in the 80s and 90s compared to, to today because it just seems like there's – you can't go a series without a flag being thrown. It's been it's crazy. Well, you see some of those you see some of those old films films with the Raiders and, and their safeties coming up just trying to decapitate people, or you you see Dick Butkus back in the day, man, trying to like he's throwing a forearm shiver to a guy right up under the throat. I mean, it's a violent game. We get that. I, I totally understand that. And some of the rules have to change, but it's still always going to be a violent game unless. You keep going and keep going, and then at some point it's going to be flag football. And I don't think, I don't think people want to see that. I mean, we, you, you kind of look at it as gladiators. Uh, guys are in there. We we understand the circumstances. We understand what we're getting ourselves involved in. But I get why the NFL is doing it. I, I agree with some of that. But they're making some of these helmets now uh, with the concussions. I, I tell people all the time, and they don't believe me, but like, there's more concussions in soccer than there are in in football, but people don't want to believe that because all you hear about is football. They're trying right. to demonize that in football, and uh, they're making some of this stuff so safe now. But I, I, I love the game. I hear a lot of guys that retired that says, you know, with the concussion stuff, and I had a bunch of them. But I promise you, I would do the same thing over and over because, you know, and, and some of those guys say, well, I don't think I would do it again. I don't know if I'd play football. That's a bunch of bull because I would play it over again. If I could, if I wasn't 50 years old and I didn't have to take some shots to get myself warmed up, I'd go back out there tomorrow and try to play. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Kelly, what? <laughs> I feel the same way, actually. Kelly, um, looking at your Browns career, if the game is on the line, okay, and you had to have yeah. it with a wide receiver, are you taking Kevin Johnson or Dennis Northcutt? Oh, that's a tough. You, wow, you gotta ask. Wow, he's, that's a tough question, man. Golly, I know they're throwing some out there. I, there. There's guys. There's guys. When you come into organizations, the first day when I walked into the Browns organization, I had a, I had something going on with Dennis Northcutt. Uh, it's, I, I can't explain it. I don't understand it. Uh, but you just have certain synergy with guys that. You know what he's going to do before he does it. Um, Dennis Northcutt was that guy for me. I, I, you know, he could break off a route, and I totally knew what he was going to do. Uh, now KJ, uh, KJ probably had the best set of hands. He and Marvin, and they both played at Syracuse. So you got to give uh, you got to give that uh, that wide receiver coach up there. You know, they should have given him a raise back in the day because those two guys were the best ball catchers I've ever been around. Like KJ had unbelievable hands. He struggled a little bit sometimes getting off the ball, but man, he could catch anything in his catch radius. He was going to catch it. But if you're asking me, I'd have to go with Northcutt because I just had something going on. It was like telepathic with Dennis Northcutt. I love him, and I, I hate. When people always bring up, well, if you would have caught that ball in the yeah. Steelers game, well, you know what? If if and and you're not you're right, and people are right when they say that. But like, Cuddy caught two balls in that game to keep us in that game and to get that lead that we had. He played really well that day. He had a huge punt return, and you know he everybody makes mistakes, and unfortunately he made that mistake at that time. But man, I can't say anything bad about Dennis Northcutt. He was. He was my guy that I wanted to throw to, and I love throwing to him. You know, Kelly, last question before we get you out of here. We appreciate your time coming on with us today. Um, you know, we got Deshaun Watson now uh, at, at quarterback. He, you know, he led a, a you know, last second drive uh, <laughs> against, the, uh, against the Ravens the other day. And did you guys feel the pressure to become a franchise quarterback for the Browns? Um, because we, we, you know, everyone laughs at the Browns with the old jersey with all the other different names and, and things like that. But I always say, like, you know, playing for the Browns at quarterback is like, you know, finding, you know, Lord of the Rings, right? Everybody wants the Lord. Of, everybody wants that guy back there, like precious. Everybody wants the ring. Um, did you feel pressure, like, in, in, for the outside, the fans, the media, to become that dude and, and to like be the next, you know, franchise guy for the Browns? I don't think so. I don't think I felt that way. Uh, I, I was uh, I was a little perturbed uh, with our coach because I think he pitted Tim and myself against each other, uh, I, and he'd probably deny that. But I, I just felt like, in the back of our minds, when I started, I felt like uh, 
that if I played bad, Tim was going to come into the game. And I, mm-hmm. I know that Tim, because we've talked about it before, and he felt the same way when I started playing. He felt like if he didn't play good, then they were going to make a change. And as a quarterback, you cannot play in that circumstance, in that situation. You cannot have that lingering over you. Uh, I don't I don't think we felt pressure from the outside, but I think we felt pressure that way. Uh, I'm glad that social media was not as uh, as heavy wow. back then as it is now. Um, you know, my son plays football at co- in college, and, and I've told him, man, don't listen to that stuff because it's crazy. We didn't li- I didn't listen to that stuff. I didn't watch Sports Center. I didn't do all that stuff. I was just kind of in my own bubble. Um, but I just I, that was my one thing that if I could go back, uh, I just didn't like the way that we were pitted against each other. Um, and if one of us didn't play good, the other one was going to come in. And and, it, and you guys know this, as an NFL quarterback, you've got to have total confidence yeah. that the, the staff, the personnel, the people, the head coach, all your coaches, uh, they have to have the trust in you. And when you start flip-flopping back and forth, well, there's no trust there. And that kind of lingers with you and that kind of – it weighs on your mind. And, and that was the – if, if he would have just made that decision and gone with that decision and stuck with that decision, that would have been fine with either myself or Tim. I, I can firmly I firmly believe that. But uh, it, it was just – it was too wishy-washy, and that's kind of how his his tenure there as, as coach was. I mean, it was it was all over the place. I mean, when something – when something happened, I mean, we'd have them team meeting or this and that. And like, I'd just be like, just give us the game plan and let us go play. You know, wow. that's kind of that's kind of the way I felt. Yeah. Well, and listen, we love your honesty, and yeah. we loved having you on. Great stuff. Great catching up with you again. And hey, yeah. keep that right arm uh, in shape. You never know. You never know. Yeah, man. I, you know what? I can still. I, I tell people all the time. I, you know, Tim. You, Tim taught me this, but I can still hit a flea off a fly's tail. But you know what? I don't want to get hit no more. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, real quick, five seconds. Who would win in a race? You, Tim Couch, or Bernie Kosar? Who wins? Oh, uh, Tim. Tim's got us both. Yeah, I, I'm. Tim was a good athlete. He's got us. All right. Very good. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Great to see you. <laughs>